Starship's fifth flight is one of the keys to unlocking many exciting developments, including the HLS Starship variant, a lunar lander in the Artemis program. Honestly, it'd be a mistake to think it'll be a long time before Starship makes the journey to the moon. In fact, SpaceX and NASA have recently revealed an important detail about the living spaces inside the HLS Starship that we never saw before in preparation for the historic flight at the end of 2026. Let's get into it on today's episode of Alpha Tech, and as always, thank you for checking out the show. At this point, many people might be curious about what SpaceX has achieved with the HLS Starship beyond the incremental progress being made in Starship's V1 testing. How ready is SpaceX for a lunar mission? Has the crew habitat inside Starship been finished yet? That seems to be the most common questions these days. However, no need to worry. These concerns only scratch the surface of what SpaceX has publicly shared. In reality, they've achieved much more than what they've told us. SpaceX has a tradition of fast-paced, agile work, often tackling multiple tasks in parallel with precision. While Starship's test flights are ongoing, SpaceX has been working with NASA to conduct vacuum tests, elevator trials for the lander, vacuum Raptor engine tests, and docking system trials that will eventually connect the HLS Starship with the Orion and Gateway orbiting the moon. There have been remarkable advances these days. Even as Starship achieves new milestones, SpaceX has not lost focus of the Lunar Lander Project. In fact, they've even intensified their efforts. Ken Kojaki, Deputy Director of NASA's HLS Program Office at Marshall Space Flight Center, recently shared in an interview, I could see SpaceX innovation, and I could see that we're not just dictating things when they have better ideas. We haven't hemmed them in. And until now, the life compartment of the HLS Starship has been revealed. We also looked at the crew cabin to mock up the visuals of some of the sleeping quarters, the lab, and everything that's being built as mock-ups in Boca Chica. It's sitting at Boca Chica right now. Now, for those who might not remember, around mid-last year at Starbase, a nose cone from Starship 22 appeared with features resembling a laboratory for the Starship's human landing system. The nose cone was painted white on one side, recalling concept illustrations of the lunar lander. The flaps were removed, giving it a bare appearance. Additionally, we could see electronic panels and a fabric-sealed door allowing access to the model's inside. For those who were curious then, now SpaceX had inadvertently revealed more about it during the live broadcast of Starship flight, lending credibility to the confirmation by the deputy program of the Human Landing System Program Office's confirmation. This image seems to show a crew compartment with an outer access door. Though it looks simple, SpaceX has previously stated that it will prioritize optimized space usage without compromising aesthetics or functionality. Now, as we can see, the clean black and white tones in the compartment match the HLS Starship and SpaceX's Starman suit colors. There's also a computer screen along with the strategically arranged buttons that suit large gloves looking very modern. Honestly, even from the small view, we can feel the futuristic trend that SpaceX is bringing. Although there aren't many images of this, we know that SpaceX has completed the development of crew cabins, sleeping quarters, and a science lab mock-up inside the nose cone. In the near future, let's look forward to seeing how SpaceX continues to develop and complete other parts of the crew compartment, particularly how they apply their futuristic design style. But that's not all for SpaceX. SpaceX and Axiom Space recently completed the first Artemis III integration tests, marking the first time since the Apollo program that a pressure simulation was conducted in the HLS's Starship airlock while NASA astronauts wore Axiom spacesuit. These are exciting images showcasing how far SpaceX has come with this mission. NASA and Axiom have also done everything possible to support SpaceX along the way. Ken Kojaki remarked, the next time we'll really have a chance to look at it as a whole is we're getting a design update from SpaceX to review in November, and then we'll be able to look at it at the critical design review next year. Everything's getting prepared for the Artemis III mission slated for 2026. Although time's tight, this will certainly be a pivotal moment in space exploration history. The HLS Starship will play a key role in transferring the crew from Orion to the lunar surface. Its spacious pressurized cabin, advanced navigation, and control technology will ensure a safe and precise landing, creating a stunning spectacle. Chukanki put it, I think that the day that Starship lands on the moon, that we have something of this size coming in and landing vertically, the crew exiting, taking the elevator down to the surface and exploring the surface, I think that for me is what I'm looking forward to. The lunar program's development is progressing clearly and rapidly. Looking back, SpaceX has reached many achievements in its pursuit of these missions. As noted in a NASA press release since being selected to land humans on the moon since the first time since Apollo, SpaceX has reached more than 30 specific milestones for the HLS. These include the identification and testing of essential hardware for power generation, communications, navigation, propulsion, life support, and space environment protection. 
The final hurdle for Starship is its reusability and habitable space capabilities. Once achieved, it'll be ready to become the first spacecraft to land on the moon. If SpaceX's Starship can land on the moon, then it can take humans there too. In fact, with its exceptional power and synthesis capability, it'll make NASA's mission not even need the Space Launch System and Orion at all. So, why doesn't NASA just abandon these expensive and seemingly redundant intermediate vehicles? First, the technical side. While SpaceX has shown it can reliably land the booster stage of its Falcon 9 rocket upright, the spent booster stage doesn't currently land with a heavy pressurized crew compartment on top of it. Starship, meanwhile, is an order of magnitude bigger than the Falcon 9 and is still trying to perfect a landing on Earth. Its booster, Super Heavy, has yet to fly. NASA's not yet ready to launch its astronauts on such a new system, though that could change. Additionally, vehicles returning to Earth from the Moon hit the atmosphere at much higher speeds than they do when returning from Earth's orbit. NASA's Orion crew capsule, which uses legacy heat shield technology that dates back to the Apollo days, successfully tested a high-speed reentry during its 2014 test flight. The gargantuan Starship vehicle belly flopped through the atmosphere, taking a page out of the space shuttle's playbook. Starship has yet to successfully land from Earth orbit, let alone lunar orbit. And that brings us to the second reason, politics. SLS and Orion were written into U.S. law by the Senate in 2010 NASA authorization bill and employed tens of thousands of people in every state. Congressional support for the project has been strong over the years, even as projects have delayed their schedules and blown their original projections. By merely flirting with non-SLS options for sending humans to the moon, as former NASA Administrator Jim Burdenstein did two years ago, the agency incited the wrath of some powerful senators. The current plan for Artemis is thus an artful mix of political and technological compromises. Every major NASA contractor participates in the program, as will the agency's major international partners through the Gateway program. Artemis comprises both classic cost-plus contracts and new fixed-price contracts for its major components, with jobs distributed around the country. It's the inevitable outcome for a large project that depends on discretionary spending overseen by a representational political system. But one thing that can't be denied, SpaceX's Starship is becoming prominent above everything else. SpaceX is revolutionizing rocket technology with its fully and rapidly reusable Super Heavy Lift vehicle which challenges the competitiveness of almost all other rockets. For instance, SpaceX has planned to deploy 400 Starlink satellites into orbit per launch, with most of this cost attributed to propellant presents a formidable challenge to competitors. Existing expendable rockets worldwide simply can't match the cost-effectiveness of Starship. Furthermore, companies or countries aiming to develop fully reusables are significantly behind SpaceX and are struggling to catch up as SpaceX continues to advance. Beyond its technological significance, Starship holds immense historical importance. Starship marks a turning point for humanity as we embark on the journey to colonize other celestial bodies. Its significance rivals that of any great moment of exploration and settlement in history. And that's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.